How could the ancient Israelites have possibly known how disease was spread and how to prevent that spread? Today we're diving into the fascinating world of Leviticus chapter 15, a text that provides a unique glimpse into the practices and beliefs of ancient Israelite society. This chapter, nestled in the heart of the Old Testament, seeks to offer guidelines on matters of cleanliness and hygiene, an area of life that might seem mundane to us today but held deep spiritual significance for the people of the time. It's a chapter that intertwines the physical with the spiritual, the everyday with the divine. Cleanliness was not just about health and hygiene, but about maintaining a state of spiritual purity, a concept that was interwoven into the fabric of their daily lives. As we explore these verses, we'll delve into the historical and cultural context, giving you a richer understanding of this ancient text. Now prepare to delve into the details of Leviticus chapter 15. Starting with verse 1, we enter a world where cleanliness went beyond simple hygiene. Leviticus chapter 15 is a fascinating examination of ancient health laws primarily focused on bodily discharges. Verse 1 begins with God speaking to Moses and Aaron about a man with a bodily discharge. The original Hebrew word used here is zuv, which is often translated as a discharge caused by disease. This is not merely a matter of hygiene, but of spiritual cleanliness. Verses 2 through 7 detail the laws of contamination. Anyone who touches the man with the discharge becomes unclean until evening. If the man touches someone without washing his hands, the person he touched must wash their clothes and bathe with water. These laws may seem harsh, but they were crucial in a time when understanding of disease transmission was limited, to put it bluntly. Moving on to verses 8 to 10, we see more rules about contamination. For instance, if the man with the discharge rides on a saddle, the saddle becomes unclean. Anyone who touches anything that was under him becomes unclean, and anyone who carries those objects must wash their clothes and bathe, and they too will be unclean until evening. Verses 11 to 12 outline what happens if the man with the discharge does not rinse his hands with water. If he touches someone, that person must wash their clothes, bathe with water, and will be unclean until evening. Any clay or wooden vessels the man touches will be broken or rinsed. Finally, verses 13 to 15 take us through the purification process. The man with the discharge must count seven days for his cleansing, wash his clothes, bathe his body in fresh water, and then he will be clean. On the eighth day, he must take two turtle doves or two pigeons to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting as a sin offering and a burnt offering. That's the first half of Leviticus chapter 15 explained, but there's more to discover. But moving on to the second half of the chapter, we find more intriguing cleanliness laws. Starting with verses 16 to 18, we encounter the regulations concerning seminal emissions. These verses highlight the importance of ritual cleanliness, not just for the individual, but also for any objects or persons that they may come into contact with. From verse 19, the focus shifts to the topic of menstruation, a natural process, yet one imbued with powerful symbolic meaning in the context of Levitical law. The text underscores the significance of physical cleanliness, but beyond that, it also points to a deeper spiritual purity. As we delve into verses 25 to 30, the laws extend to cover situations of prolonged menstrual flow, again emphasizing the need for purification and atonement. The language used is precise and detailed, reflecting the meticulous nature of these rituals. Finally, verse 33 concludes the chapter by reiterating that these laws are not just about physical cleanliness, but are integral to maintaining the sanctity of the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God amongst the Israelites. The historical context here is essential. These laws were given at a time when understanding of hygiene was limited, yet they served to protect the community from potential sources of contamination. That brings us to the end of Leviticus chapter 15, but what does it all mean? Leviticus. Chapter 15 is a fascinating look at ancient hygiene practices. This chapter emphasizes the importance of cleanliness in the ancient Israelite society. It outlines various laws on personal hygiene, which were not merely societal norms, but also religious obligations. These laws, intricate as they were, served to maintain health and prevent the spread of diseases in their community. So the next time you think about cleanliness, remember Leviticus chapter 15 and how our understanding of hygiene has evolved throughout history and how advanced that knowledge was 3,000 years ago. Are you ready for the next chapter? Just click here to go straight to it.